Ground transportation is transitioning from its past of gasoline and diesel to a linked electric future all over the world. That future will be dependent on the supply chain that is dominated by China unless something changes. China did not arrive at this position by chance. It took more than a decade of strategic as well as large-scale spending to get there. In contrast to China, which is spending billions of dollars to extend its awareness as the world's leading electric vehicle manufacturer, the United States is spending quite less. We need more than small change on the battlefield to win the economic war. To gain a competitive advantage and crush the US competition, Beijing is taking a nationwide approach by leveraging economics of scale as well as promoting national champion companies such as Hawaii, BYD and Catal. The emergence of China as the world's largest competitor has elevated this to a geopolitical concern. As a result, the United States world leading automobile, truck and bus industries are a national necessity. Beijing has invested more than $100 billion in the country's EV sector and the country hopes to take the lead in connected, autonomous and shared vehicles in the future. By the end of 2021, Beijing intends to spend around $120 billion on autonomous and connected vehicles or linked vehicles. In addition, over $400 billion will be spent on 5G technology. The United States government recently made $180 million available for the purchase of electric buses. But when one considers that only 1,000 electric buses out of approximately 1 million nationwide operate on US roads compared to around 421,000 electric buses that are operating already in China, there is a lot more work to be done. Thinking about this, how did China dominate the electric vehicle market? What is their strategy and why is the United States falling short? China's growing leadership has always been the subject of several recent studies. McKinsey and company published one of them earlier this year. The global consulting firm has disclosed how China has normalized the use of electric cars. While it remains a curiosity in many parts of the world, McKinsey's research includes a poll which found between 10% and 30% of Americans believe their next car would be electric. The proportion of people in Europe who lean towards an EV ranged from 40% to 60%. There was also China, where around 70% of the respondents expected to be driving an EV within the next year. Another contrast was discovered, this time by a study conducted by the Center on Global Energy Policy at Columbia University. It stated that Trump administration did play a minor role in developing the charging stations and many other infrastructures, which are needed to encourage the use of electric vehicles. And they have selected China as having the world's most aggressive EV policy as well as the world's largest EV fleet and has been developing the charging stations which are needed to support it. Last year, the Chinese car manufacturers sold around 1.25 million electric vehicles, representing a 62% increase over the year before. Moreover, there were also around 808,000 EV chargers in China, which include 330,000 public charging stations. I mean, this is really massive. This compares to over a half a million in the United States, with approximately 80% of those living in private homes. EVs were first introduced in China in 2009, with subsidies provided by the central government. As part of the Columbia report, luring numerous companies into making them, including some with no such car manufacturing experience, and reports of fraud and incompetence prompted a revision of the policy in early 2018 putting a greater emphasis on increasing the car range and even improving the performances of the cars. China has even taken the political and financial leaders in promoting electric vehicles to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, combating serious air pollution problems in cities and reducing the country's dependence on imported oil. David Sandelau, which is the author of the Columbia study, stated that China is not likely to give up its fleet anytime soon. Private organizations in the United States are even aware of the fierce competition and are also doing their part to support electric and autonomous vehicles. Ford, for example, has announced plans to invest around $29 billion over the next five years. However, to compete with China's leadership, the federal government's funding in the United States must be increased exponentially. As evidenced by the passage of CHIPS for the American Act, Congress is beginning to recognize this as a bipartisan concern. This $22 billion package contains $10 billion to encourage domestic semiconductor manufacturing, but funding is still required, and much more needs to be done. The federal government plays a very important role in funding basic research and development, particularly in the field of battery technology as well as encouraging cutting-edge businesses which lack access to the traditional capital markets. 
It also plays an essential role in trying to promote the national EV market as a national security imperative, which is something that cannot be replaced. For the United States, the advantages of China's ascent have been substantial. When it comes to exports, China ranked 11th on the list of the top 10. Direct and indirect economic relations between the United States and China account for US jobs which are approximately 2.6 million and around $216 billion in US GDP. Despite this, even in today's hyper-partisan politics, the United States leaders are united in their fear of China's economy and geopolitical ambitions. Countering China's rising power was a major focus of the Trump administration and it will continue to be a major focus of the incoming Biden administration too. Even the arising discussions about an industrial policy to restore America's competitiveness can be heard in Congress. China has achieved success, not through the adoption of Western-style capitalism, but rather through a carefully planned combination of opening up domestic markets whilst also trying to maintain central government control over firm behavior resulting in what is often referred to as socialism with Chinese characteristics. Made in China 2025, also known as MIC 2025, is a document that outlines China's industrial policies. A multi-decade strategic plan for the manufacturing sector published in 2015, the goal is to increase China's global share of the market by emphasizing higher value goods and focusing on the development of high-tech manufacturing. China's approach to plug-in electric vehicles provides a valuable window into its industrial policy, which is widely regarded as a disruptive technology because of the internal combustion engine's decade-long dominance in transportation. Electric vehicles also provide a platform for automated vehicles, improved urban air, improved energy security, and a slower rate of global warming. EVs and their supply chain, like other important technologies prioritized under MIC 2025, have benefited from significant government support. In the year 2000, the state of Chinese research and development on lithium-ion batteries, also known as LIBs, and the electric drive system was approximately 10 years behind that of Japan, taking into account both the performance and the cost of the technology. Over the next five years, China will close that gap primarily as a result of the 836 programs. This is due to the rise of China's consumer electronics industry and the rise of BYD Company Limited, which is a successful battery manufacturer for consumer products that entered into the automobile industry as a private corporation in the year 2003. So far, China seems to be giving quite a rough competition to the United States. But who knows what will happen a few years down the line. For now, we can only observe the current stats of China and let time answer what events will unfold in the near future. So, what is it that keeps the United States of America lagging behind China in terms of electric vehicles? Please share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Congrats on making it to the end. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications to see more of our future videos. Thanks for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.